I'm Tom Hensley, City of Kingsport Wastewater Treatment Plant Superintendent. We're going to take you on a TV tour of the plant today um, so you can understand a little better what goes on here. Uh, we'll go over to the influent pump station now. First uh, step in treatment here, we've got a bar screen building over here that removes any larger trash um, that we don't want it going through the plant, through pumps. So uh, once it passes through there, it's over here to the influent pump house where uh, we have six influent pumps that are uh, capable of about nine million uh, gallons a day each. And uh, those pump it into the wastewater treatment plant where the, uh, the treatment continues. Our next stop after the influent pump house is the uh, grit removal system. And it, it's trying to remove the uh, fine particle grit material. Eggshell is a perfect example. And by vortex action, it's pumped up through the water and then into this truck, which is uh, disposed of at the landfill. We're over here now at the primary basins, which uh, receives the flow after the grit structure. We have uh, three primary basins here, which handle about uh, 8 million gallons a day. And here at these basins, we're trying to let gravity take place. Uh, material that wants to float, material that wants to sink. There's a, uh, a flight mechanism that, uh, that goes along the surface and pushes the uh, floatable material down to a scum hopper. And, uh, you can see how the uh, drive system moves the chain and uh, pulls along the flight at the surface and then uh, along the bottom back to the, uh, the sludge uh, hopper. And it would be rotated to allow the, the scum to be uh, uh, to flow in into this, and then from here it flow to the scum hoppers for removal, which those solids are then uh, moved on to a gravity thickener, which we'll visit here shortly. The weirs at the end of the primary basin allow the, uh, the the cleared effluent from this basin to move on to the next process at the trickling filters. I mentioned that the uh, flights move the floatable materials down to a scum hopper, and what we do to uh, keep that material out of our anaerobic digesters is pump it out of the scum hoppers with a truck. Uh, something probably a little different than a lot of plants do, but we find that it causes, uh, uh, helps prevent more problems. You're looking at the trickling filters now, which take the effluent from the primary basins. Uh, that water is going over about six foot depth of rock, and there's a, uh, a biofilm that grows on that rock that removes nutrients out of the water. And the arms are turning by just the uh, force of the water coming out of the nozzles. There's no pumps or electricity used here in this process. Here we're at the aeration basin, and this receives an effluent from the trickling filters. Uh, it's about two and a half million gallon tank, and the water takes about four hours to go through it once it enters. Here, we depend on the bacteria to do the treatment for us, and we monitor uh, what we call a mixed liquor, and we also monitor the dissolved oxygen, which is uh, is pushed into this basin through fine air diffusers. Here's one of our four final clarifiers that's full uh, at the moment. And uh, the water, again, comes in from the aeration basin into this center well. And from there, it eases as calmly as possible out into uh, the clarifier where, at, where the uh, solids will settle out. Uh, this, this tank's about a, uh, a million gallon clarifier. Here we have our new uh, number four clarifier, which is our largest. And um, as you see now, it's empty. We've got, uh, you have a sweep that travels the floor that brings the uh, sludge that settles out in the clarifier uh, to that center hopper well. And from there, it would be processed uh, into the uh, digester. We're here at the 100 foot diameter anaerobic digester. And um, this receives the uh, solids from the primary basins from the uh, from uh, the final clarifiers where we, uh, we have some of those solids that we want to waste out of the system. And here we depend on the bacteria to further break this down for us. We just give them some additional heat uh, by doing that with a, uh, with a boiler. Uh, the boiler actually runs on the uh, methane gas uh, that the, uh, the bugs generate in this anaerobic digester. And, and behind me you see uh, two of the large pumps that uh, mix this 100-foot uh, 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 digester. And uh, between the heat, uh, the mixing, and a regular feed, they're, they're real happy, and uh, we don't have to purchase any gas to, uh, to run our boiler. We're in the uh, dewatering control room, and here we're taking the solids that were wasted out of the system. And, by, and how we do that is we have three centrifuges, uh, and, and this room is uh, manned uh, about 50% of the time in, in order to, uh, to monitor that process. 
Over here we have the controls. Uh, we monitor the speed that the centrifuges are, are, are spinning, uh, the polymer dose, and the polymer is a uh, binding agent to uh, bring those solids together. As the centrifuge throws those solids out, you need something to, to help develop what we call a cake. Um, and that cake is then disposed of uh, at the landfill. The cake's about a 23% solids and, and the rest of that is, is water, uh, but 23% is, is pretty good, uh, basically an industry standard. What you see behind me is our UV chamber. Uh, about five months ago, we began using a, a ultraviolet technology to disinfect our wastewater. So this water uh, would be from the final clarifiers. And uh, we were using chlorine gas and uh, went away from that technology. And uh, this equipment's going to be able to allow us, once it's all completed, to treat a peak of 35 million gallons a day. Uh, there's going to be 24 uh, uh, ultraviolet modules. Uh, uh, each module has uh, uh, 16 lamps and um, the water passes by the ultraviolet lamps and uh, is disinfected at that point. We're now in the wastewater treatment plants lab and, and it, here, uh, crap. This is a critical step in the process. Yep. We're now in the wastewater treatment plants lab and um, we depend on uh, the, the data that we uh, generate out of here. Uh, uh, very important to run the plant. Uh, we run about 12 tests daily and uh, a lot of other data collection uh, that's recorded here. And uh, with these lab tests, we're able to make uh, decisions on process control. Um, and we track these uh, for the entire month. Uh, we have uh, a state permit that we have to meet. And so we have limits that uh, uh, we compare to our daily test in uh, order to well, I hope you've enjoyed your tour. Uh, we're now here at the final discharge point for the city's effluent. It's, uh, it's back in the river and uh, on to uh, beneficial use, uh, swimming and drinking water and all the things that we uh, need water for.